Tales from my D&D campaign. Previously. Oh yes, you see these over here. The Eternans were gnomes. Library. You're welcome. The Fey Lab, the Fell Lab, worker machines. Uh. The hooded Kuatoa with a crossbow, medium elemental suck, airdrop attack, and that's when they learned that the water is electrified. They also learned that KT is a dick, but that's not really news. Immune to the shock, he grabs Angel's leg to pull her down, and Black lands and starts a tug of war trying to drag her to safety. It's a short contest because the priest is stronger and has better leverage, and the assassin is forced to let go. And Black is like, aw, I was hoping he'd pop out with her. I wanted to fish him out. And then he takes a double move to swim all the way down the trough and around the corner. Holy. Yeah, they're slow on land, but without the heavy armor, they swim damn fast. And Dream is like, we have to find some way to drain the water. Because as they start to contemplate the volume of concealing electrified water there is to hide in at every level of the main room, Ginneron suddenly seems a lot darker and more dangerous. Anyway, it took Little One a little longer to destroy the air elemental, because it was using its obnoxious flyby attack to strafe him, but once he adjusted and actually caught it, he crushed it in one hit like its friend. And Black flies Angel, soaking wet, up to a higher bridge, and they catch the Tritons, who had made a break for the tunnels, but who instantly surrender when caught. And when Little One starts asking questions in Aquacommon, they aren't exactly loyal to the Slave Masters. Where are the Kuatoa? How many are there? The priest led us here with more than twenty other slaves, but I don't know how many Kua. Most were already here when we arrived. But where did you come in? And they explain that there's a water inflow at the top level, where the other slaves are all waiting in the flow conversion chamber. The players piece together that when the KTs killed some of Don Horatio's guards and broke into Gineron, they managed to backtrack the water to a hidden ocean entrance, and they let in a small invasion force. Unfortunately for them, the slaves couldn't survive the electrified water within the facility proper. The priests had to use multiple spells just to get these tritons through alive. Anyway, for now, they stash the tritons in the purification pool, because Little One values freeing slaves just slightly higher than crushing anyone who attacks him. And their last warning is, We don't know what he's after, but the commander of the operation is a zealot, a true believer. He's been looking for something for weeks and will not even consider stopping, and even the priest is afraid to challenge him. Next, Little One wanted to smash through the blockaded hallway, but Draven was like, The workers seem neutral right now. I don't want to turn all of them against us while we still have KTs to deal with. But they're obviously guarding something. We need to find out what it is. We don't know how many of these things there are. And they haven't done anything to us. So instead, they crossed the bridge to the mechanical section, which had a lot of noise coming from it, because one whole wall of the room was a complicated mess of gears, pistons, and other machinery working constantly with no clear purpose. Otherwise, the only thing in the room is a narrow passage which is... Kind of blocked by a metal wall panel bristling with pointy tools and blowgun-looking tubes. There was no way to tell if the mass of workers behind it was three feet thick or thirty feet. And they're all like, what the hell? And then they start re-arguing the relative merits of smashing them versus not messing with pointy things they don't understand. And Little One's like, you know we're going to have to fight them eventually. And Draven asks Temple One, do you know what's behind that hall? And this is the one area he actually used, so he's like, there is a chamber with repair facilities for the Warforged and the smaller constructs, and then another hallway which leads to the controller. What is the controller? It's an intelligent construct, I suppose. It directs the workers and other moving parts of the facility. I really don't think we should piss it off if we don't have to. In the end, they agreed to move on for now. All that remained on their rough map of the facility were water management, the Eldritch Lab, and the mysterious core. Out of these three, the most exciting to them was... Water management. We have to find some way to drain the water. Or turn off the electricity. Or that. Just something so they can't run away so easily. That water hurt. And Draven casts Sea and Viz because they are sure that assassin is still running around. Plus, who knows how many other Kuatoa. So, down some more tunnels, they reach a room with a bunch of equipment in the middle, and most of the floor is metal grates, but as they enter, Draven, because of his spell, can see the KT assassin standing invisibly near the other doorway. And Draven's like, uh, I'll keep looking around the room. Just try to act like I haven't noticed. And I'm like, okay, make a bluff check. And Draven's like, bluff. Hmm. And he tries to hide it, but the Kuatoa's big crazy eyes could see his pupils adjust when they focused on him, and it wins the initiative and shoots Draven for well over 20 damage while he was still flat-footed. Then it runs out the door and leaps off the bridge into the large pool of water surrounding the core at the base of the atrium. Ah, I'll use my healing belt. That would almost have one-shotted me without my bear's endurance. 
and the others get ready to make chase, and then they look at all that concealing electrified water and close the door. They can't find any way to lock it, but at least this way, the Kua can't sneak in without being noticed. And everyone's like, okay, magic guy, fix it. And Draven's like, give me a minute, I'm still pulling crossbow bolts out of my torso. The four panels of complicated controls, all labeled in unintelligible Itarin, are more than a little daunting, but Draven is an expert at Arcana and has a very high use magic device skill, which represents the art of making shit work for you despite not knowing required magic words, or being the right alignment, or being the right race. So his skill check is really good as he spends minutes checking out the apparatus and it doesn't look like the electricity can be turned off, at least not from here. But he has isolated two mechanisms that could regulate the overall flow of water. One would shut off the inflow of water at the top, and without that, the water will slowly drain out the bottom, but it will take hours, maybe even a day. The second control, he was certain, was an emergency drain, which would empty the water in the minimum amount of time. It's hard to tell how long that will be, but he can tell that once the emergency drain has been activated, it won't stop until it has drained the whole thing. Well, that sounds like what we want. Can anyone think of a reason not to do it? It sounds pretty safe. As long as those bastards have no place to hide. Well, they'll still have 30 foot deep, 5 foot wide empty troughs. Anyway, Little One's character was getting antsy, because he doesn't like just letting the assassin go again. So while Draven's working, with Angel covering him, he opens the door, and they see nothing. But you kind of expect to see nothing when your enemies can turn invisible. And in his perpetual quest to innovate in the field of taunting Kuatoa, Little One gets out his fishing rod, baits the hook, and dangles it into the water. So anyway, Draven shuts off the water inflow, and hits the emergency drain, because what the hell and they hear moving water all around them as the whole place starts draining at a fairly gradual pace. They watch for a minute, and the water level is definitely starting to drop, but it's going to take like an hour. Not exactly as emergency as they hoped for from the emergency drain. But then Angel spots a grappling hook latch onto the far side of the bridge from below, and before she can even register that, she notices something wrong with Little One's shadow, and oh <laughs> A black armored Kuatoa's warhammer hits him with crushing force for 31 damage, and where blood hits the weapon, it practically glows. And the other one's like, good, we don't have to wait around for them. Hey, that hammer might be good for black. Not if it's an evil hammer. Are you okay? Oh yeah, we'll see how he likes it on my turn. And a bunch more elite Kuatoa warriors decloak, and one hits Angel, and he has a combat stance that allows them to flank Little One from weird angles. I'm immune to flanking. He has a combat stance which allows them to mildly annoy Little One from weird angles, but there are like ten of them, and the ones behind the front line start tossing acid flasks and lightning balls, Draven and Tyrim start buffing and healing people, and Garretton scores a lucky hit with a throwing hammer, and Daggerface scores a lucky hit on the empty space beside the bridge, because he gets the worst rolls. There's nothing wrong with his stats. But then it's the main event, and Little One delivers a devastating 36-point bone crusher to the guy Kua Commander throws in front of it. What maneuver is that? You know how Crusaders have one that lets you block an attack by throwing your shield in front of an ally? There wasn't a version for evil Crusaders, so I made one. Where shield block gives your ally your shield bonus plus four against the attack, the human shield maneuver drags an adjacent ally in front but gives them minus six armor class. So that KT warrior is brutally slashed and Kua Commander just lets him go over the side, where he hits the water with a very unfish-like, unalive splash. And that's when the lightning globes start to go off. Draven had moved to avoid them, but Tyrim is hit for six, which is actually pretty rough for him. Another hits some machinery and catches Temple One in the zap. I've been damaged! And the Warforce hobbles away back down the hallway towards Mechanical. Oh great, he's totally going to get captured. And the assassin climbs up onto the bridge and shoots Black, but without his sneak attack bonus, it doesn't hurt as much. And Kua Commander is like, I am a champion of Babal, the chosen of the chosen! And he uses a less damaging maneuver to hit Little One and then back up safely, allowing more of his troops to get into melee. And Little One's like, if you're so great, why are you running away? But he's got all kinds of abilities, like the Paladin of Slaughter Aura, which gives his opponents minus one armor, and he has a stance which heals himself a little every time he hits, and when the assassin shoots Draven for tons of damage again, leaving him near death, Kua Commander charges his shield with evil energy and hurls it like freaking Captain America for a killing blow, and it hits the wall above the door because he rolled like a two. 
Draven takes the hint and backs into the room with Tyrim, while Black and Little One battle their way across the bridge, with Angel using her spike chain's reach to add her DPS without exposing herself to too much damage. The two warriors with the red pauldrons had some warblade training, but once they dropped, the only real threats were the hooded sniper and the paladin. And Little One manages to drop Kua Commander, but he's still alive, and a KT warrior wakes him up with a healing potion. Then he uses Anklets of Translocation to teleport ten feet to a location where he can stand up safely. The soldier's loyalty is rewarded next round, when he's pushed in front of another of Little One's mighty blows, while the Dark Paladin uses all kinds of tricks to regain hit points and keep himself in the fight but he's quickly running out of allies. And Black smashes his way through another couple, giving Angel an opening to spring over and beat on the assassin. And Little One's like, which of you wants to take the next hit for this guy? And he makes an intimidate check and manages to scare the last couple into running away. Meanwhile, the assassin is just trying not to die. And he whip vines up to a higher bridge, but Angel hurts him badly with her attack of opportunity, and Draven pokes his head out long enough to finish him with some crossbow karma. Leaving Kua Commander all alone, he finally manages to knock Little One unconscious with a savage hammer blow, but he's surrounded and near death himself, so he uses his anklets one last time, teleporting down through the bridge to drop into one of the growing whirlpools caused by the draining process. Black heals Little One back to his feet, and even at low health, he's tempted to leap down into the swirling, electrified water after the deadly aquatic enemy, but a voice calls up from the only bridge below them. You need to stop the draining. And it's this blue, heavily armored war force. And he's like, I'm glad you routed the Kuatawa, but without the water, we are going to have bigger problems. And they have bigger problems. Next time on Tales from My D&D Campaign. The two warriors with red pauldrons. The two warriors with the, the two warriors.